Lesson 15.3b, Solving Multi-Step Volume Problems. We can use the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism to solve multi-step volume problems that have a missing measure. For the example problems, we'll need to first convert the quantities given to cubic feet to find the volume. Then we'll be able to solve for the missing measures. So we've seen this before, but just to remind you, the volume of a rectangular prism can be found with the formula V is equal to length with height. We multiply them, or we could do volume is equal to the base height. And the capital B represents the length times the width as an area. One cubic foot of water equals approximately seven and five tenths gallons and weighs approximately 62 and 43 hundredths pounds. A water trough holds 45 gallons of water. It's one foot wide and has a height of two feet. What is its length? The first thing we have to do is find the volume of the water trough in cubic feet. We think we'll need to divide the total number of gallons, the 45, by the unit rate of 7.5 to find the number of cubic feet. We get 45 gallons divided by 7.5, that's equal to 6 cubic feet. Now we need to find the length of the water trough. This 6 cubic feet is our volume. We use the formula for volume. Volume is equal to length times width times height. We substitute in the values that we do know. We know it's 6 cubic feet, that's our volume. We know the width is 1 foot and the height is 2 feet. We multiply, we have 1 times 2, that's 2. We have 6 is equal to some length times 2. Now we divide both sides by this 2 to isolate this variable L to one side. We have 2 divided by 2 and 6 divided by 2. That gives us 3 is equal to 1 L. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that's a 1. We just have 1 L. We know the length of the water trough is 3 feet. How much does the water in the water trough weigh? We think we were given that one cubic foot of water weighs approximately 62.43 pounds each. And the water trough holds six cubic feet of water. We found that out, that was the volume. We multiply, we multiply the 62.43 times six. There are two decimal jumps in the problem. There's gonna be two decimal jumps in the product. We know the water in the trough weighs about 374 and 58 hundredths pounds. This is a raised bed garden, and it's telling us one cubic foot of soil weighs approximately 80 pounds. This raised bed garden holds 1,152 pounds of soil. Its length is six feet. Its height is eight tenths of a foot. What is its width? So the first thing we do is find the volume of the raised bed garden. And we think we need to divide the total number of pounds by the unit rate of 80 to find the number of cubic feet. This is how many pounds per cubic feet. We find that it's 14 and 4 tenths cubic feet of soil. Now we find the width of the garden and we use volume is equal to length times width times height. Now we substitute the values into the formula. We know the volume is 14.4 cubic feet, and we know the length was six. We don't know the width, so that's gonna stay as a W. We know the height was eight tenths of a foot. We multiply six times eight tenths, and we get four and eight tenths. So now on this side, we have four and eight tenths, and we still have that unknown width, and it's equal to 14.4. Now, to isolate this W, this width, to one side of the equal sign, we divide both sides by that 4.8. And we can do 14.4 divided by 4.8 and do long division, or we can try multiplying as an inverse. We can try multiplying 4.8 times 4 to see if we get 14.4, but that's too much. So we can try multiplying it by 3 and say, oh, that's just right. So we know that's a 3. 14.4 divided by 4.8 is a 3. 
And on this side, because we have the same numerator and denominator, we have a 1, so we have 1 W, we know the width of the raised bed garden is 3 feet. If the information of volume, length, width, or height is given in a word problem without a diagram, we can draw a quick picture of it on scratch paper. Sometimes seeing a diagram can help us figure out what we need to find. Now we're finished with module 15. We're moving on to module 16, which is the last module of the book. We'll be done with sixth grade math. We've got 16.1 split into three parts. The first one is how to find the mean. If you're still having problems working with inverse operations and dividing both sides to isolate a variable, go back and watch video 11.3c. It's linked in the description and it's there to help you. Have a really nice day and please join me for the next module. Bye.